Hey guys, this is James from TDB, bringing you in between episode number 28. So, today you can see I have Seawind's t shirt from her site on. Um, so, if you guys don't know Seawind, uh, she runs a blog, deathbyt.blogspot.com, and she also made these pretty sweet t shirts. This t shirt is large, so you are seeing um, the far too large for me version. Um, and uh, yeah, her blog's great. It's a very humorous take. Uh, she mainly writes about poor, um, and I definitely recommend everyone go check her out. So I'm wearing this on perhaps the most um, thematically inappropriate episode because I'm actually reviewing a oolong, a uh, yancha wui. And I had talked a bit about um, just, you know, moving forward and doing one last yancha. And so there's a couple different ways that yancha sort of fits into... Uh, my tea routines and whatnot. Uh, one way is it can be a really cheap uh, daily drinker for me, uh, just if I'm in the mood for some quick, cheap caffeine um, that's not poor. Um, the other way can be drinking with friends. I've found wooies can often be a, uh, a friendly favorite for a lot of people. Um, I find that it's a good alternative for people that are really into coffee and like sort of darker teas and aren't maybe as as tr as moved by some of like the Taiwanese oolongs or greener oolongs, which are usually pretty friendly for new folks. And the last way um, is kind of as a special occasion tea. And so that's where this tea would fit in. Um, so it's from Tea Urchin. And uh, I'd encourage everyone to just sort of do this cost analysis in your head. What makes you think uh, a certain tea is expensive or not? And I think a lot of it is framing. So if you see a tea that is uh, is like you get 500 grams for 10 bucks, that would just seem really cheap. So then if your $10 would get you 100 grams, that would seem markedly more expensive. So you end up comparing things very relatively. Um, and, you know, uh, I, I just think that... Uh, if you were actually to look at the cost of per session, and the tea that I'm drinking, I haven't even talked about it, is the premium Shui Shin, Jin Gui, uh, tea from Tea Urchin and Tea, I would definitely recommend. Um, so that tea is, I think, about 15 grams, which comes in these uh, small sample packs, about 7.5 grams, so it's good for a large session. Um, so you get two sessions out of that, and I think it's about 12 bucks. So you're talking about about six to six fifty um, per session, uh, which is expensive if you are comparing the tea versus other tea, and it's a lot less expensive if you're comparing it towards a meal out or a drink out. And if we're talking about like, I mean, assuming you're not drinking these teas every day, I mean, you can definitely afford to drink these teas weekly or every other week. And I will say that the upper end yancha uh, can be expensive for a very good reason, uh, and that reason is it can be very, very good. And, you know, I babbled on too long, so I'm going to quickly reheat this water. Um, and, yeah, so uh, I have brewed this tea for a couple steeps. I sessioned this tea a couple months back, and I really liked it. I have noticed that... The tea urchin wooies tend to be a little bit lighter roasted, and in fact, I can see the leaves are becoming a little bit greener. In terms of nose and stuff like that, uh, the first couple steeps tended towards this more tartness, um, but there's definitely a distinct green vegetalness that uh, creeps into both the nose and, and the drink, so that's something to note. So it's maybe not necessarily the best tea if you like the really heavy-handed, um, high-roast yancha. It was harvested in 2013, so I would definitely say this is ready to drink, uh, just sh by the sheer fact that it's on the lighter end of the roasting scale, and because uh, uh, it's had a few years to settle down at this point. And let me give this guy a steep. So I'm using about 7.5 grams for an 85 milliliter Ishing. I will say with yancha, one thing you do not want to do is slack on that leaf to water ratio. It would be particularly egregious if I was using something like even two or three grams for this. Uh, I just think that you bring out a lot more of the essence of wui 
uh, when you are uh, hitting it with really, really high leaf to water ratios. And when it comes to a tee like this, it might be tempting to sort of split this guy up into a couple different sessions. But I would say that it's better to have one really good session than a couple mediocre sessions that are not as good as they could be. So I'm going to have another smell. So the vegetal notes are changing a little bit. Um, it's kind of difficult to describe, so we are just going to have a sip here. I'm going to wait to drink this before I determine how I'm going to steep it for the next one. So it's very, still quite active in the mouth. Um, some of that sort of like um, creamy, chalky, charcoal uh, mouthfeel uh, that you have. I would say that this tea has lost a little bit of the mouth action that it had in the first couple steeps. So I'm going to actually um, go ahead and brew this again and extend that steep time by maybe 10 seconds or so. So it still has a little bit of that tartness. There's a lot of things going on in this tea. It's very complex. Um, similar to poor, you also kind of want to pay attention to how these wooies change in your mouth and the aftertaste that goes on. Sometimes there can be a really nice coating effect on the mouth. And I do find that the taste does linger here. I'm not getting any throatiness or any of that, uh, that super deep plague on that you can for... Uh, really, really um, better teas, and I'm not saying that it's not necessarily coming, I'm just saying that I'm not tasting it yet. I am three steeps in. So a little bit, uh, still very orange color. So smelling more of that roast in the cha high. Interesting, a little bit more stone fruit sweetness coming from it. So it's still, it's, I would say that this brew is nicer, uh, it's a lot fuller, it's still not getting any of that, uh, it's not overly bitter or overly astringent or anything like that. Um, yeah, and I would say it's really nice, and so I actually had this tea recommended to me by Richard, who I've always found that he has really good taste, so thank you Richard. Um, let me know what you guys would like to see next. If you guys would like to uh, me to review some more Yancha or more Rob Poor, I have a feeling I'm going back to Rob Poor very soon. Uh, I know you guys like the comparison, judging by the sheer amount of comments last week. So let me know uh, what you'd like me to compare. Would you like me to compare two sort of teas from the same genre that are sort of at similar price points and just weigh one versus the other? Um, do you like sort of that tin storage comparison? Uh, let me know what you guys would like to see. I would definitely um, feel like I didn't quite do this tea justice, um, but I would definitely recommend it. Uh, I will be enjoying this tea for the rest of the day, I'm sure. Um, really, really tasty tea. Uh, and, you know, I haven't had the opportunity to taste through all of Tea Urchin's Yancha. And that's partially because I tend to just buy a couple sessions of this stuff kind of as it happens, uh, rather than loading up on the real special occasion type stuff. But I think this would definitely uh, qualify as a pretty strong rec recommendation for me, for anyone that's already ordering from Tea Urchin. Just toss this guy in the, into your sample and in, into your cart and see how you like it. And cheers.